Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for joining us again. My name is Cody and I will be your host for the next hour. Here on Power Prompts, it is our goal to empower you to power through your weekly art block. Every month we create a theme and every week we have a, a prompt based around that theme. And this month's theme is mermaids. So we're drawing a bunch of mermaids. Um, but today's prompt is swamp. So we have a mix of mermaid and swamp. And I got a sketch going for you. I can't wait to show you guys. If you would like to participate, feel free to post your work on Instagram with hashtag Adobe Live Power Prompts. And towards the end of the stream, we will be going over your awesome entries. And we have a handful of swamp entries. I've been seeing a lot of frogs, a lot of lily pads, a lot of alligators, and it's fantastic. <laughs> um, so let's head on over to Fresco and I can show you guys the sketch we're gonna be working on today. Um, hey, Sam, also welcome RB, good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so I have, I decided, this is the first time I've ever done this before. I wanted to do like one of those half, uh, half under, half over water uh, pieces. Um, I kind of got inspired, Sam, by one of your recent uh, DCCs where you did the half underwater lion um, Photoshop. A piece and I have never done something like this before so I wanted to try to kind of like figure it out on the fly um, and see where we get um, and so I have my little <laughs> my little alligator friend just hanging out in the water here um, and, we, and I did some mangrove trees again I've never drawn some mangrove tree, trees before so that's another new for me um, so just kind of like trying to challenge myself a little bit with these um, and uh, we'll see where we get right Hey, Annika, welcome. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just merge all of these sketch layers because I don't really necessarily need all of these separated anymore. And I am going to go ahead and lower the opacity on that. And I'm going to make a new layer. And we kind of really want our atmosphere to kind of be greenish, right? I mean, you, you think about swamp, it's kind of like muggy and humid. So we're, we're probably thinking about um, a lot of warm tones, warm greens, um, like algae and lily pads, like mucky water, um, all of those kinds of uh, fun things that everyone loves, right? <laughs> everyone loves humidity. <laughs> muggy and buggy, yes, exactly. Maybe I should draw in some like little flies in there and stuff. <laughs> some little skeeters. <laughs> um, Annika says, love that, uh, love the way you're challenging uh, your already amazing Cody Cran skills. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I think from what I've seen, um, um of how people tend to do like the water uh this way like a like a, the cross cut of the water is that it seems like the top part is always a lot like desaturated because the light is kind of shining down onto the top part of the water and then right when you get into the water it becomes a lot more like bright and saturated because the light is shining through the water um, so there's like the difference between the flat surface and then shining through. So I'm going to try to emulate that the best I can, um, and we'll figure it out as we go. Right. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the trees because that might be like the easiest part here for me, at least, um, it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to be, um, just throwing them in here really quick like some with some brown and I'm going to be using um, uh, Kyle Webster's Conte crayon brush for these. Hey Steve, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Is that a vegetarian gator? Maybe he just, he's, he's just friends with the mermaid, right? He's just friends. They're friends. Fish are friends, not food. 
Name that movie. The question is, is that a vegetarian mermaid? <laughs> Do mermaids tend to eat alligator? I don't, I don't know. Maybe is she, is she like a, a bayou? Is this a, is this a bayou situation? Like, are we, are we like in uh, New Orleans here? I definitely think we should um, come up with a backstory for this mermaid now, because like, how did she get here? What, where, what, <laughs> how did, oh, maybe, you know, I mean, she probably was in like the Gulf of Mexico or something. And she just like popped on into the bayou real quick. And she was like, wow, I've never seen a gator before. And then they became friends, right? So the way that I'm using this crayon here, if you guys can tell, um, when I use the crayon, if you guys have seen my work before, um, a lot of the time I'll talk about how I will do it. I'll kind of like do little, almost almost like random crosshatch, if you will, um, just to kind of like break up the texture and make it look as if it was kind of scribbled. However, when I do like planks of wood or trees, I typically go in a single direction to kind of emulate bark. Um, so if you guys can see here with the trunk of the tree, I'm going with the trunk of the tree. Um, so the negative space ends up looking like bark texture. So I'm just kind of going with the shapes here, with the tree shapes in a way that I would kind of just assume uh, that the um, bark would be going in, in that direction. And we're probably going to keep these trees pretty flat. And actually I might end up going back um, and redoing these um, background trees into in a different color. I might end up doing them kind of more of a, a green color to kind of push them in the back a little bit more, depending on what color we do for the background. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna worry about that because that that is a bridge uh, we can cross when we get there. But for right now, I'm just gonna block them in and then we can we can figure it out from there. When I was doing this sketch, I actually did it just this morning. Um, I really had to look at a lot of reference um, for how to like break up um, the the water line. Um, and, and it's really interesting uh, because you can really very easily just like push something in the background just by simply erasing a little bit. Like for instance, if I wanted this, um, this tree branch to be pushed back a little bit more, all I'd have to do is just erase this bottom part. And now suddenly it's pushed back into the water a little bit farther. Um, so it kind of just like, it took me a little bit of um, um, like trial and error to kind of figure out where I wanted like all of these tree roots and stuff. Um, but it's definitely an interesting challenge. I think I'm gonna leave the, the this part uh, not colored in because we can do it as a separate color on a separate layer um, when I go to do the underwater parts. And also, how was your guys' weekend? I feel like I never actually end up asking that. I think about it before we go live and then I always forget to ask you guys if you did anything fun this weekend. Um, we just kind of uh, hung out at the house and uh, we've been playing Elder Scrolls online lately. So that's fun. Okay, just throwing in the last bit of this color here. 
Hey Rob, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining in. We are currently coloring in some, uh, I almost said mango trees, mangrove trees. Mango trees are different, totally different tree. <laughs> Annika says, my weekend was really good. I went to an art gallery. It was so good. That's awesome. How are you? How are you liking your new area that you moved to, Annika? Um, I love seeing the pictures that you've been uploading. Very, very cool. Okay. So I think I what I'm gonna do here. Hmm. Let's grab. I think I'm gonna lighten, I'm gonna take this kind of like olive tone green from my palette and I might just lighten it and desaturate it a bit. And I'm gonna make a new layer and throw it back here. And we're going to make this the background, kind of like the background um, sky, I guess, or atmosphere. Steve said he was chilling like a villain. <laughs> I haven't heard that phrase in a while. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I think that's gonna work. I, I'm feeling confident about this, even though I'm, I'm kind of figuring it out as we go again, like it's totally fine if things don't work out the first time. Um, and a lot of the time they don't for me. <laughs> and I, I'll be honest, that's why um, I haven't really been posting all of my um, finished pieces from my um, um, power prompts. Uh, prompt lists be on Instagram because uh, they just haven't fully worked out for me and I just haven't really felt confident in my work lately. So um, I'm kind of like, I, I don't know, maybe I'm going through like an art art rut a little bit. I kind of feel like, um, like my art has stagnated a bit. So um, I haven't really been posting as much as I probably should, um, but we'll get through it. We'll get through it together, you guys. And it's all about you know, figuring out um, new ways to challenge yourself, just like what I'm doing today. Um, and just kind of like trying to keep what you're making fresh. And also, especially for me, like texture and color is like, like really informs my artwork. So um, trying out different texture brushes to kind of like inspire you um, and also different, um, different colors and color palettes and stuff that can maybe just kind of like revitalize your interest in your own work, um, can be really helpful too. Okay. So now that we have the background color in there, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this same color that I used for the sky here, and I'm going to saturate it again and darken it. And I might, let's see, I might push the hue just a tiny bit over to um, <clears throat> the cool tone, cool side, just shifted it over just a tiny bit. And I think I'm going to kind of make some more um, indications of some mangrove trees in the back here. Um, just like super like lightly implying that there's more trees back here. Like, so it can kind of just give you the idea that the, the swamp extends farther than what we can see currently, right? Um, and that kind of gives it more of, um, of a feeling of this is an, like this is a forest rather than just that's the sky.
Okay, something like that. Maybe one more over here. I am totally making this up as I go. I'm not looking at reference right now, although I did look at reference earlier in the day, but I'm kind of just like throwing in some shapes and seeing what looks good, basically. It's not really um, super scientific. <laughs> And I'm just going to kind of uh, imply some leaf shapes as well. Again, not going to add a ton of detail because this stuff is in the background. Just want to imply these shapes and your brain will your brain will fill in the gaps. Really, in all reality, we don't need it to be um, super detailed, nor do we really want it to be um, because we don't want uh the background to detract from what's in the foreground here there now we have kind of a, just an implication of a forest a mangrove forest <laughs> steve yes i mentioned that earlier that was actually um uh sam's lion halfway underwater was kind of what inspired me to do to do this illustration really and i'm going to save my work uh, don't forget to save your work if you guys are working on anything, of course. Oh, and I just realized I missed a spot here. Right in here. Just going to fill that in. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, so... I might, let's see. I think I'm gonna take this brown that we I did originally for the trees and I'm going to, um, I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna lower the opacity of that layer and I'm gonna go just paint over top of the green that we just did and, and I color picked that color and now I'm gonna go to the trees and I'm gonna lock the transparency and I'm just going to go to a hard round brush just so it goes on smoother. And we are going to use that color for these kind of more background trees. Um, let's see. It might, that might be a, might want a little bit more contrast than that. So let's see. I'm going to lower the opacity of the brush. Maybe that color is a little bit better. That way it's not so stark, um, but it kind of starts getting that atmosphere um, mixed in with the bark color. Um, okay, and so then we can save the foreground trees for like the true um, bark tone. Okay. Um, let's see, I might actually take this background tree color and on that, oops, let's go back to that Conte crayon brush. And I am going to just kind of fill in maybe just a little bit of maybe some land or something um, just here in the background. Like that. And now I think I'm gonna try to paint in the, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, water layer, the, wa the top of the water. Um, I might, just to change up the texture, let's, let's go in and try out the watercolor brush. Um, I wanna see if that works well. And I also, um, I think I'm going to, one second, going to look up some uh, pictures. Let's see if I can find some 
any kind of reference, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, so like this one, for instance, where it's the top of the water, because the top of the water is getting all of the shadow from everything, like you can see that like the, the reflection of the trees and everything. Um, so it's it's much darker than right when you go under the water, it's like, boom, really bright because the, the light that's going into the water is reflecting um, all around. Um, so, okay, so now that we have that in mind, um, let's try to figure that out. <laughs> I am just figuring this out as we go. Okay, 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 we can do it. We can do it. We have confidence, right? We have confidence, you guys. Okay, so let's take, let's take this color, actually, let's close the color wheel here and let's grab this color and I'm going to saturate and darken that. Um, let's see. And is this an empty layer? It is. Okay. So let's try to throw in the watercolor, watercolor color. And I'll probably do another layer as well. <laughs> Annika having difficulty typing, it's fine. And we can also, fun, fun detail we can add with the um, watercolor brush here. I'm gonna saturate this a little bit more and let's make the, um, brush a little smaller and I'm going to grab the brown and we can very, very lightly do some reflections here. In the water, actually, I don't really like that color, how it's turning out. So let's grab a different color. Just gonna throw in some, oh yeah, that looks nice. Hey, okay, okay, we have confidence, everyone. Have confidence, oh, co art confidence, that's what we all need. We got this, we got this. New things, we're doing new things and we're succeeding at them, isn't that great? <laughs> Use the watercolor to color the water in ice watercolor. <laughs> That's funny. That didn't even occur to me that I was using a watercolor brush to color water. <laughs> okay. And I am going to make my brush a little bit smaller again, and I'm just going to really push in right at the base there, just so we can get some, some like almost ambient occlusion, I guess, if you want to call it that, but just kind of like the darkest part of the shadow. And then we'll also do like a wash shadow um, underneath the whole tree as well.
And uh, with the shadows, I'm just kind of, or reflections rather, I'm just kind of um, mirroring, as you guys can see, the shape that's above the water. So I'm kind of just following that shape through. Um, and it, and when I'm going directly down as well, that's something that's different uh, that you wouldn't necessarily always think of. Um, like with water reflections, it's a little bit different than just simply drawing a shadow, because if I was drawing a regular shadow, like on flat ground, I would be drawing the shadow like out here, right? Um, roughly, of course. Um, but with water, because it's not a solid surface, the reflections actually mirror perfectly straight down, typically. Um, uh, and it kind of like gives the sense of depth. Like there's there's something that goes deeper inside that instead of it just being a solid flat surface. Um, it looks like just like last week, sadly, it seems like we might be having some frame rate issues. So I'm going to go on BRB really quick and we will be right back. So sorry, you guys, one second. Okay, hopefully that fixes it. Um, it seems like we were having a little bit of an issue with our iPad capture for some reason, um, but I think we might be fixed. Oh, what did I do? <laughs> One second, you guys, hang on. <laughs> Okay, I think we're fixed now. <laughs> so we're having some weird issues with Zoom and the iPad capture, but hopefully, hopefully we got it fixed now. Let let us know if it doesn't uh, if if we have some issues. Hey D, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Um, all right. 
Okay, back to what we were doing. Uh, we were adding um, reflections to our mangrove roots here. Oops, wrong brush. Let's go back to the watercolor brush. And we are just throwing in these mangrove roots. And that's been pretty good so far. I think I'm gonna make the brush a little bit bigger again. And I'm going to, like I said earlier, just kind of give a wash of, of like a shadow here, just underneath the trees overall. And I'm kind of just like doing this in not a very like precise way. Um, I'm just kind of like throwing in some like darker spots in the water a little bit to kind of give um, the sense of like shadows that you might see reflecting off of water and stuff. Um, and then lead, no, kind of leaving some lighter spots as well. Okay. Um, and then while we're at it, I think I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm going to lower the size of my brush. I'm going to go ahead and add the reflection of the rock here as well. And again, we're just going to mirror that straight down. Not really worried about being very clean on that edge because we can go back and fix that later. There, something like that. Um, okay, let's check, see what it looks like without the sketch. Okay. Oh no, did I just, oh, I did all of that on the sketch layer. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I got to redo it. I got to redo it. I did everything on the sketch layer. Okay. Okay. Try again. Let's try that again. That's too bad. I really like the way that that looked. <laughs> Throwing in some color here. And again, we will throw in our rock. Uh, CJ says, speaking of standing desks, I got one too. I'm standing right now. Yes, um, I'm actually using CJ's desk now. Um, and he just got a really big, awesome standing desk. Um, and he is right on the other side of uh, our stream setup. I think I might, I feel like the water color is like really desaturated compared to the all, all of the other colors in the scene. I think I might... Um, uh, saturate this, um, th just this layer here. Um, and to do that, we can actually do a little bit of a, um, an adjustment layer. Um, so we can kind of like mess with it a little bit and we can just make that adjustment layer here. And then we can also clip it to that, just that, that layer. And then we can just drag that saturation up. We can also mess with the hue if we really wanted to. Um, and the darkness. Hey, Clever, welcome. How are you doing? Gotta lock them sketch layers. You know, I've never gotten into the habit of locking layers to not use them. I only ever use like lock transparency. I've never, like I hear artists about artists doing that a lot, um, locking layers that they don't want to touch accidentally. I really need to get into that habit of doing that. Actually, I'm going to do it right now. How, how about we do that? lock layer and we can lock the background layer as well. There, now there's no risk of us accidentally drawing on the sketch layer again. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. So I think from what I've seen also um, is that like kind of like 
the water the water line uh like there's definitely like a little bit of a uh um i don't even know what you want to call it i think sam on his dcc called it the water seam which i've i've never heard that term before but maybe that's what it's called the water seam it's like this this the line that separates above water and below water um and i feel like the times that i've seen illustrations of the water seam um have been very like bright um I've seen them both ways, actually. I've seen it where the water seam is very dark, and I've also seen it where it's very bright. Sam said I just made it up. No idea what it's called. <laughs> hey, you you pulled you pulled it off though. I I believed you one hundred percent. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new layer, and we're gonna just test this out and see how it looks. Um, I'm going to throw in the seam color. And actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna lighten this a little bit. I'm gonna throw in the seam color, and then yeah, no, that's a little bit too yellow. Let's let's try this again here. Um, and before I figure out like really what color I want it to be, I am going to, uh, drop in kind of like the base color of the underwater section so we can get an idea of what the contrast is going to look like. Yeah, it's a little bit too, too yellowy or too, too dark too. So let's lock that transparency. Okay, something like that. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, okay, so then let's throw in some more watercolor color, watercolor color. And I think think what I'm gonna do, since it looks like from, from the images that I see uh, for reference, it kind of looks like, it kind of almost like has a vignette around the edge, like it's darker uh, around the edges in, underwater. And then it's like very bright in the middle. Like it's kind of like got this like light ball of light kind of more in the middle. Um, let's see. Let's uh, let's make a new layer over top of this. Oh, that is quite yellow. Let's cool that down just slightly. And I'll also change the color of the seam as well, the water seam. It's just the water seam is officially what the what the phrase is, because I really don't know what else to call it. <laughs> okay. Something like that? I don't know. Um, whoa. Let's saturate this and darken it a little bit more, I think. It's so weird how, like this is almost fully saturated and yet it still looks very gray compared to the rest of the scene. Maybe it's just because it's so dark. Oh yeah, it was the darkness that was kind of messing it up here. Uh, 
Um, okay, so let's grab, let's grab like this color kind of, and let's go back to the water seam. And I'm going to push this down just a tad. Something like that. I might actually make the, let's unlock the transparency. I might actually make the water seam just a little bit thicker. Um, maybe, oops, not that thick. Um, maybe just to kind of like give it a little bit of a more kind of um, illustrated look. Doesn't need to necessarily be realistic. I'd rather it be able to be noticed. And maybe we can add some like little bubbles and stuff like that. I've seen people do that before. And we want it to be kind of like uneven and um, kind of go up in parts and down in parts because it it really um, just like is showing like the waves of the water. And I think I might even make it just a little bit lighter. Let's lock that transparency again. That's looking like something, right? Sort of. Um, okay, so let's, um, like I said, so typically it kind of looks like it's a bit of a, um, uh, a vignette. Um, so I'm going to take um, that color that I had before for the water and I'm going to take the watercolor brush and we're gonna saturate it and darken it a bit. And we're gonna try this a bit, a little bit more. Actually, let's turn on the sketch so we know where we're coloring here. looking looking kind of swampy okay I'm still feeling like the um, the top of the water isn't dark enough. Um, so I think, I don't know how to fix this um, because like when I darken it, it goes really gray, even though I'm saturating it with this, um, with this adjustment layer here. So we got to figure out a way to um, to fix it. Now I might. What if we What if we just didn't do the um, the adjustment layer? And what if we What if we just locked the transparency and tried to find a better color instead of doing an adjustment? Um, let's do a hard round with that locked transparency.
there's just something about it seems like the way that the um this watercolor brush tends to work that it just doesn't want to get dark enough without going gray. Uh, Annika says, love how you take your own color palette to still convey the right message and tone of the illustrations. Your style seems so versatile, but I'm sure it's hard to bring the same colors in each illustration and make it read perfectly. Um, honestly, keeping for me, uh, keeping the color palette minimal is actually actually makes it easier for me, um, as weird as that might sound, just because I already know where to start from, like having this pre-created palette, um, it takes the guesswork out of it for me, um, and I know that nine times out of ten I'm gonna like the colors um, that I'm starting with, although this is just like of course, I come into situations where I'm kind of like struggling to figure out, um, like you said, like certain tones. Um, but this is a spe very specific and uh, a circumstance because we're trying to like convey the feeling of water um, and like underwater and over waters. That's and that's something that I've never done before. So it's a little bit of a challenge trying to um, figure out how to do this in the right way. Um, now, let's see. Hmm. Maybe we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it, you guys. We'll figure it out. Um, I might, though, let's see. I might um, start throwing in some um, like layers into the water. Um, I kind of want to put in like some plants and stuff in the background. So, I think I'm going to have them get lighter as they go farther back. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab this color here. Um, let's see, maybe a little bit darker than that. Might grab like that color. And I'm gonna use the watercolor brush, but I'm gonna change the blending mode to normal. So it's not, cause typically by default it's on multiply. So it's darker every time you paint with it. Um, but I'm going to change it to normal. And then I can start painting um, like kind of like a lighter, oops, let's see. Oh, it's still going darker. Let's try this again. Let's try it on this layer. Nope, it's still going darker. Let's try a lighter color. Maybe I will do multiply. Let's try that. Let's see if it works. 10 more minutes. Oh, I know, right? Oh my gosh. It's about time to look at community entries, you guys. Um, we spent so much time on the water, but I feel like this was a productive stream. We kind of like tried to figure things out together and stuff, you know, kind of worked, worked out a little bit. Just kind of like throwing in some shapes in the background a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller. Throwing in some, maybe just kind of like some like implied maybe plant shapes or something just to have them kind of like be kind of like blurry in the water in the background. something like that. And then as, as, uh, as we get closer and closer uh, to the, the camera, let's say, um, we'll make them more, the shapes more defined. And um, I'll probably like for the, for the foreground stuff, I'll probably use the Conte crayon. So the shape is much more defined. Um, but in the background, we can use these watercolor shapes to make that blurry effect underwater. Um, all right, you guys. Well, we can head over to um, uh, community entries now. Um, and I want to show you guys um, what we have because we have a handful of really beautiful community entries. I can show you guys ones from this prompt and then also ones from previous prompts as well. 
Um, I really wanted to show off, uh, we got a handful of really cool swamp ones. Um, like this one did a half underwater one as well, um, RD Design. Very, really, uh, very beautiful. Uh, I just love all of the grass and everything. And then all, also all of the details on the, the mermaid fin as well. Like really wonderful uh, detail. She has like a uh, really beautiful, uh, like, uh, flower crown um, like with wheat and she's got a little flute. I feel like this mermaid has um, quite an interesting backstory. Um, like she almost feels like a, um, a fantasy um, like fairy or something like that. Really beautiful. Um, and then we also have this one as well. Um, I really love the framing on this one is really cool. And she also added um a uh, focal blur to like all of the foliage in the background and everything um really really nice water texture as well like really impressed with that um and also her facial expression is really beautiful the hair is really beautiful um i love how you kind of like had the hair drift down her body and then it kind of like it's floating on the surface of the water like that's really cool um and then added the added lily pads and then the um the foliage that's breaking the frame of the illustration is really nice too it adds a lot of uh, interest um yeah really beautiful danny thank you so much for your entry um this one's really funny it, this one reminded me um i love the the, the look on the gator's face uh uh, it, it, this this one reminded me kind of like of George of the Jungle <laughs> when he's like he's playing fetch with his um, his pet um, elephant because in the description it says this bear man is playing a game of fetch with his pet crawfish and gator pup. <laughs> uh, I just love that idea um, and I love it when he uh, when people add backstories to their characters as well. So really cute um, and I yeah again I really love the little gator face. He's really adorable. Um, and this one was really cool too. This is one of my favorites. Um, uh, awesome uh, mangrove style trees as well. And she did a half, half um, out of water, half in water too. Um, and then you also have like the, her hair, the mermaid's hair almost look like it looks like it's melting into the water, which is really neat. Um, like awesome. Like it, it really looks wet, you know, like it kind of gives almost like a zombie feeling like zombie mermaid like swamp swamp princess <laughs> type feelings um and then the branch that's coming in that has like the hanging moss and the snake yeah really beautiful details uh, also the texture on the top of the water is really beautiful and you did a really nice job of um going uh the textures from above and below the water um the uh cj says the fog is incredible yeah it looks it looks so good like there's so much awesome atmosphere like i keep looking at it like and and all of the scales too oh my gosh you added every single scale on the tail and it looks really cool it looks really cool um like it's it's got like a really shiny glistening like almost snake like surface um like it kind of reminds me of medusa almost um <laughs> annika says swamp princess for show i love it <laughs> Um, yeah, really, really cool. Um, and then we also have a few entries that were not mermaids, although there, here's uh, the last one with a mermaid. I thought that this was super cute um, where she kind of has, it's almost like a little, like one of those floppy sun hats, but it's a big lily pad. Um, so it's so clever and cute. Like that's such a great idea. And she's got like her little like mermaid ear fins. Um, and then like all the sparkles on the water, really great water texture too. Um, and also there's a reflection of the character in the water, which looks really nice. And it's like kind of distorted uh, because there's movement in the water that's a lot more difficult to achieve um, than it might seem. So yeah, fabulous kitty artist. Thank you again for um, your unending entries. I feel like you've done every single one at this point. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and then we move on to the ones that uh, were non-mermaids. Um, we have our little frog friend here. <laughs> so, so adorable. Oh my gosh, it's like a little wizard friend with his, his little like hat tie around his chin. <laughs> it's so cute. And I love all of these textures um, and just, yeah, the, the muted colors are really beautiful. Um, and I love how the whole 
um, scene is like really muted kind of like green teal tones. And then you have like the pop of like the saturation from uh, the wizard hat, which really makes your eye um, draw in to the character in the center of the, the screen, um, which, yeah, it's really, really beautiful. Love, um, it's kind of almost like a, you have like a lot of like speckle textures, which is really nice. It kind of gives it like a traditional uh, quality to it. Thank you so much for your entry. Um, and then just like one more, um, I wanted to show this one. Uh, it's like a, it's like a fish character fishing. I, is that cannibalism? I don't know. Um, but uh, it's super cool. <laughs> like it reminds me uh, again, like one of those swamp creature type, um, type deals. Like it makes me feel like this is some kind of like grim fairy tale or something. Um, especially like the scene with the, just like the tall trees in the background and the fog. Um, this looks like it could totally have some kind of crazy backstory to it. Um, really, really cool. Love the like realistic fish head too. Like that's just like totally adds to it. Um, all right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. And I can't wait to see your entries for the next one, which is, uh, fish friends is our next, next prompt. So a little bit more vague this time around. Um, so I can't wait to see your guys' entries and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.